everyone, I'm Lorraine Driscoll, and this is another episode of Building Better Brains, where each week I talk about the root causes of why your child might be having a hard time learning, reading, and behaving, and what are some solutions that reach way beyond the limitations of IEPs, medication, and endless tutoring. Last week, I talked about the MTHFR gene, what are the signs your child might carry that, as well as the misconceptions surrounding that, that it is not in fact the autism gene that approximately 50% of the population carries that mutation and um, why that mutation can impact or increase the risk of neurodevelopmental disorders as well as all kinds of other health issues. So today I wanna talk about what you can do to um, kind of turn that gene around, what you can do if you, if you either know your child has that gene or if you suspect your child has that gene and um, basically how you can tone it down. Because the big thing here is that there's a big misconception which leaves people very powerless that genetics carve our, our health destiny and there's not much we can do about it. That dyslexia or autism or ADHD or anything else runs in the family that it's inevitable that we might you know, get it or our children might get this disorder and there's not much we can do. When in fact, carrying a gene only uh, does not even mean that that gene is expressed. It simply means that that gene is uh, present and there are many things that can turn genes uh, on and off, including things like stress has a huge, huge impact on turning, uh, uh, causing genes to express as well as environmental toxicity and so forth. So without further ado, what I want to talk about without you having to become a geneticist, a neuroscientist or anything of the sort, what you can do in your kitchen uh, or your home or just with your lifestyle to help support your child's brain development, their brain health, their improve their learning and behavior. Whether you, you know, suspect they have the MTHFR, even if you think, you know, you know, they do not have the MTHFR gene or, you know, just regardless of the situation. So number one solution or suggestion is avoid folic acid, which as I've mentioned is synthetic. You want to take folate, which is the real deal, which is what is found in um, different, uh, you know, foods and so forth. So avoiding folic acid is not just avoiding folic acid supplements, both when you're pregnant, breastfeeding and giving vitamins to your child, but also, um, Folic acid is added to processed food, so it's fortified. A lot of healthy food like orange juice, uh, your grains, your cereals, uh, pastas, breads contain folic acid, and that is toxic um, and can be quite toxic, in fact, to people who carry the MTHFR mutation, right? Um, so as far as supplements go, obviously take folate or methylfolate, and that can be immensely beneficial to someone with an MTHFR mutation. And lastly, read supplement labels, because I've seen some really good supplement companies that still are using folic acid instead of folate. And also, um, you know, just making sure you avoid, your child avoids folic acid at all costs. So you know, you might be getting a supplement for one thing and it has all these great herbs and you're not realizing that there's these many milligrams of folic acid or MCGs, I should say, of folic acid, and that can be detrimental or be causing some, some issues. And just to touch on that, I have had clients who have supplemented with methylfolate and have seen phenomenal improvements and they've noticed that all of a sudden they run out and two months down the road, they're like, oh, what's going on? His behavior is horrible. And that's when they realize, oh, I've been, you know, we, we got lazy and we forgot to make sure that he's taking his methylfolate. And I don't want to suggest that that's, there's a magic vitamin. It doesn't usually work that s simply, but it can uh, sometimes make a huge difference when it's a big driving factor. The second thing is to eat food that is rich in folate. So I always say that food is our first medicine. And so you don't want to just try to out supplement that. You want to uh, fill up Fill your children up on foods that are rich in folate. So that is like dark leafy green vegetables. Romaine lettuce is also an example. Um, sprouted legumes, cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, asparagus, um, chicken liver. If you eat liver, we actually, I could never imagine just eating liver, but we put uh, liver in with ground beef into chilies and hamburgers and meatballs and so forth and you don't notice it that you don't get that strong taste and the texture doesn't bother you and you're getting a really really, really nutrient dense um food into your other in, into your meal um sunflower seeds and pasture raised eggs are also rich in folate as well as strawberries and raspberries 
So the third thing you really, really want to do, and I suggest obviously do this period, whether your child has MTHFR mutations or not, however, particularly if that's the case, is to reduce the chemical uh, and toxic overload in their environment or in their world or in their life. So limit their exposure, um, avoid household cleaning chemicals, um, which kind of inhibit methylation. So not just household cleaning chemicals like, you know, bathroom, you know, or toilet cleaner or what you're washing your floors with, but also bathroom in terms of bath products like the shampoos, the conditioners, the bubble baths, um, you know, if they're using hair product, uh, hand cream, all that type of stuff. Try to go natural. Natural can often be a lot cheaper. We only, we clean at my house with just vinegar and tea tree oil or vinegar and maybe a bit of eucalyptus. And um, it can definitely sanitize and do just as good of a job. So there's lots of natural options and it doesn't mean you have to spend a fortune. And then just be careful of like scented products, right? Um, everything from plugins to candles, scented candles, all that kind of stuff, fabric softener, you just want to avoid, avoid, avoid uh, overload of chemical exposure. And the more you can reduce that in your home, you don't have to do it overnight, but the better off your child's uh, brain is going to be. Fourthly, you want to detoxify the body. We, I feel, need to do this regardless of our genetic status or our health status. Um, but you really want to do this if your child has the MTHFR, because as I discussed last week, that can compromise their detoxification abilities up to 70%. It doesn't mean it will, but it can. Um, so first things first is water, water with lemon. I say that a lot. We always underestimate the importance of good, clean, filtered water. And then if you add lemon in there 30 minutes before eating uh, breakfast, then that can really help to further the detoxification that took place during the night. Saunas and Epsom salt baths are also an excellent way to um, detoxify. So I'm going to actually mention saunas first, which um, you know, can kind of be tricky with kids, but if your child is open to it, saunas are a great way to open up those pores and detoxify via sweat. You also want to make sure that your child showers after to get off all of those to toxins or not just getting reabsorbed back into the body and infrared saunas near infrared is best, but I don't have a near infrared. I have an infrared and, um, that is really, really effective for helping to detox. Um, in fact, there's been reports or actually when they were doing studies where with some children who are autistic and had a test for very high toxicity, they used white towels to wipe off the toxins and they actually tested the towel. Well, not only did they test the towel, but the, the towel itself had discoloration um, because of the level of toxicity in the child. So Epsom salt bath and as well, bentonite clay are excellent for detoxing bringing stuff, moving stuff out of the body, as well as adding nutrients into the body that help to further assist and open up those detoxification pathways or organs. Dry skin brushing is can be excellent uh, for the lymphatic system, but um, that is really going to depend on your child. For some kids, that's an absolute nightmare if they are really sensitive or have sensory processing disorder. And yet for other kids, it can be, they can just love it. And dry skin brushing is basically just wonderful for the lymphatic system, which is a very neglected detoxification pathway. So the more we can get the lymph moving, we can get stuff uh, being moved out of the body. So other things are like foot soaks, ionized foot baths, stuff like that. And then as well, the one we often forget is exercise. So the other one that we really want to look at is gut health. We really want to support gut health. The gut is the heart of brain and body health. As you know, um, I always say the gut only can absorb as many nutrients as um, its current state of health. So if the gut is not really healthy, um, we can take all the supplements in the world and we can eat certain foods, but we might not absorb a whole lot. So gut healing becomes really important. 70% of the immune system is in the gut. Um, the gut bacteria contains a, a massive amount of our genetic coding and the gut lining itself acts as a barrier between, um, or basically a barrier to ensure that toxins and pathogens exit the body and don't just recirculate in the blood and end up being recirculated in the brain as well. So we really want to take care of our gut. It really is the gatekeeper, um, and is essential is, is the absolute, is an absolute pillar in our health. 
So a gut healing paleo diet is often what I recommend to start. And I'm not a fan. Um, if you follow me at all, you know that I'm not a fan of a one size fits all diet. I really firmly believe in bio individual nutrition. However, I find that that can often be a good place to start to move towards gut healing, adding in, you know, ferments, um, bone broth, sprouts, all those type of things that help to heal and seal the gut. The other thing you want to do is you want to avoid processed food. So as I mentioned, fortified with all kinds of stuff, including the synthetic folic acid and also laden with preservatives, chemicals, food coloring, all that stuff you really do not want in your child, not to mention all the sugar and so forth that um, can be quite can can contribute to inflammation and toxicity. So speaking of inflammation, you want to um, if you know, you really want to kind of experiment with causing triggering that gene, if you will, to not express or to not be as strong or to tone down and to support the body is you want to eliminate foods that are inflammatory. And the top foods that tend to be very inflammatory is gluten, dairy, corn, and soy. And there's actually tons of studies, even peer reviewed studies on this, on the effect of removing these inflammatory foods and how children with autism spectrum made huge gains, gains of a year and a half in development within six to nine months compared to their um, autism peers who did not follow that diet and either stayed the same or even regressed. So um, MTHFR in general can create issues with elevation um, of, of inflammation. And so you really want to help the body not have any more problems with inflammation by removing inflammatory foods. So, um, you know, many people, including clients of mine, have seen huge improvements with removing dairy and gluten from the diet to the point where I've had parents who, you know, have said, I really want to do your reading program or your full potential program, but I'm not sold on the food. I don't think the food's a big factor. I just want to do the cognitive therapies. Um, but they get the food anyway, we do it and they try it and they're often shocked that within two months of removing inflammatory foods we haven't even started the cognitive therapy yet and they're seeing huge improvements from he's talking more he hardly ever talked and now he's you know his his expressive language disorder has seemed to really improved or her dyslexia has improved we notice she's recognizing words better or blending sounds better um all kinds of great things um again avoiding not just chemicals but heavy metals so you want to be careful of um, again, just toxicity in general in the environment. Uh, fish is great to eat, but you want to know which kinds of fish to eat. So the smaller fish, like sardines, for example, are less toxic in heavy metals. Um, and the larger fish are unfortunately more toxic in heavy metals like mercury. You want to avoid things like mercury fillings. You can get mercury fillings removed via your um, a holistic or biological dentist. You do not want to go see a regular dentist for that. Mercury fillings have to be very carefully removed um, because removing them can just cause more problems with toxicity because now they're um, kind of exposed and airborne and so forth, so forth. Whereas biological or holistic dentists are set up to do that so that it's non-toxic. Um, and then cilantro is a really great herb. It's a binder and it <clears throat> causes heavy metals. It helps to grab and pull heavy metals out of the body. So if there is heavy metal toxicity, I really suggest adding cilantro several times a week into your child's meals. I do it. We, it's a staple. We buy it every single week and it goes into smoothies. We top it on a soup just before we serve it to some, to ourselves into a stew, into salads, all kinds of stuff. And it's, it tastes great. Um, lastly, if you suspect heavy metal toxicity or you know there's heavy metal toxicity, then I would suggest, uh, consider seeing a, um, doctor who specializes, so a biomed doctor, functional medicine doctor who specializes in heavy metal detoxification. You don't want to experiment with this on your own because it can wreak more havoc if you don't know what you're doing. You want to make sure you're safely removing it from the body, not just moving it around and then letting it recirculate. Um, of course, eating clean animal products goes a long way. So animal products that are pasture raised or and grain fed, grain fed antibiotics, hasn't been given antibiotics, hasn't been given hormones, is going to put less stress on the body, particularly when the MTHFR mutation is present. 
Lastly, supplements. Um, if the, you suspect your child has the MTHFR mutation, I would advise working with a natural health care practitioner before you just start supplementing. However, I am going to name some supplements to look into to discuss with that uh, with your natural health care practitioner. Um, one of them that I'm a really big fan of because it helps to increase the production of glutathione, which is like a master antioxidant that I mentioned last time, that is NAC. Um, I use it daily um, and uh, almost daily and uh, I've seen really, really good results and I had used it with my daughter as well. Uh, curcumin helps to reduce uh, inflammation as well as detoxify and so many other great things. Fish oils as well helps to improve not only brain function, but to reduce inflam in, in, uh, inflammation. And vitamin D3, just great for the immune system, great for brain, mood, and so many other things. So those are some of my favorites. The other ones that are kind of in the B vitamin family, obviously methylfolate I discussed last time. B6 is one to look into. Um, methyl B12, so you're, um, that's really important to absorb the folate. And then choline and inositol are also really helpful for memory, improving brain function, processing, retention, all of that type of stuff. So if you found this video helpful, uh, please share. Thank you for watching. If you wanna know more, feel free to call me, reach out, uh, hop onto my website where you can take the free quiz to find out what exactly is going on with your child, what could be some of the root causes of their difficulties. And um, yeah, feel free to give me a call for my free 20 minute uh, better brain breakthrough. Thanks for watching.